are all here and it's fine. Um, I will call the Finance Committee meeting for July 28th of order. And uh, you've got the we're all right, we're all here. Yeah. Looks like we're all here. Um, and we got a bunch of minutes to do because we, I guess, have not done them before. So we have minutes from February 19th, March 24th, June 18th, and July. Move to approve nine. February 19th, March 24th, June 18th, and July 19th. Yes, second. second. All right. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, I, good. All right. <clears throat> so the real reason we're here because this uh, came up the last time we got auditing services and we were kind of behind the eight ball with time to appoint somebody really, really quickly. So we thought we'd meet now when there's time to send out an RFP before we have to do this in September to see if we got anyone. Um, so Susan was kind enough to look into this for us. So Susan, why don't you present your findings and answer any questions we may have about that and we can have a general discussion and then if we just choose to move forward, we can send out an RFP and if not, we're, well, we're all set. Well, what I can tell you is, is again, I have, you know, I have to, in the charter, it's a separation of powers. So, and what you're auditing are the offices I supervise. Mm -hmm. So, so I have to, you know, be as objective as I can because. We promise to keep you at arm's length. Yes, so keep okay. me at arm's length. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, if you decide you would like to issue an RFP, which is the process by which most the towns retain, um, the services of their auditor, at least for the first time. Um, I gave uh, Pam five examples. Um, I think the best examples that I was able to obtain were from the town of Longmeadow and from Van Cutnett. Um, they're the most complete. Um, what you want to be able to put into an RFP, um, you want to make sure that you're, uh, you're checking on the experience of the firm. You want to make sure it's a firm that has municipal experience, not just auditing, because municipal aud municipal accounting is like a hundred light years different from regular accounting. So you want to make sure you get a firm of experience in municipal auditing. Um, you want to know which team members in that firm are going to be assigned to you. And there's a couple of things that we rely on the auditor. You know, the auditor comes in and they audit the books for the year. The audit that you would be awarding in September would be the audit for FY16, which will close June 30th, 2016. So you're hiring an auditor about 10 months before you need the auditor. Um, the reason you need to do that is you need to be on the auditor schedule. So we wouldn't be, like in September, hiring the auditor to do the 2015 audit because the audit ha happens in July, August, September, and October. So you're, you're going several months ahead. You also need to get on an auditor schedule because every city and town in Massachusetts is doing their audit at exactly the same time. Everybody's doing it right after June 30th. Um, and you need the audit. Um, the reason you want to get the audit done as close to the fiscal year and close as possible is we, when we go out to bond, they want to see an audit. Um, typically, we've been bonding in January, which is been the reason that we've wanted the audit in our hands by December. Um, this year we bonded in June. Next year I don't know when we'll exactly bond. but um, So it's very handy and very useful to have the most recent audit. If you don't have your most recent audit when you bond, that it's not always the best thing. Um, so there's a reason why you want to retain an auditor know that they're going to be able to start the work as soon as the fiscal year end close and know that they're going to complete the work, say, before December, because you really don't <coughs> want it to drag on too long. Um, the things that we rely on the auditor for throughout the year, in addition to just doing the document, um, and the document, let me back up, the document that they do for you is, is threefold. First, they give you an audit of the city, all of the city's finances. Second, they do what's called the Single Audit Act, which basically audits all of the federal funding, and that's a separate document. And then the third document they do is the management, <coughs> audit, which is where they opine on the management of the city and bring out any particular issues that they want you to look at. Um, throughout the year, we rely on the auditor not just for that report, but we call the auditor regularly whenever there's a new um, DOR regulation or 
we have an odd situation where there might be some sort of insurance settlement or there's a new type of grant or something like that. We like to have the flexibility to call the auditor at any time and say, look, before we book this in Munis, how would you want us to do it? So it preempts a lot of corrections later if we ask up front. Um, we also ask the auditor to sit in on bond rating calls because a lot of the questions are about the audited financial statements. And if you look at the audited financial statements, even though they're municipal audits, they kind of put it in this other language um, that those of us in municipal budgeting don't really use. Um, so it's all different language. And so when the bond ratings call, bond rating agency calls, they're talking in a more generic accounting language. So it makes it helps. They interpret. You know, because they they do all this depreciation stuff, and you know, we just for as a municipal official standpoint, all we're looking at is did the revenues exceed the expenditures, you know, what you know, how much for cash do we have? Like that's really where it's all at for us. So they ask kind of different questions and they look at things differently. Um, so if you're going to do this, your own deadline is September 15th to award that. Um, the meeting closest to that date is September 3rd. You could have a special meeting on September 15th, but if you wanted to try to have an audit company award the audit by your September 3rd meeting, you pretty much need to get the RFP out by Friday. This Friday? This Friday. Mm -hmm. um, because then you'd want to give uh, firms at least two weeks. It's a bit problematic because it is summer, and so if you send this out, then you give only two weeks notice, it could be people in the firm that aren't even there. I mean, you could probably do three weeks, and three weeks would get you like to maybe the week but, well, just before your August 25th um, council meeting, mm -hmm. uh, finance committee. committee, it would be this same meeting in August. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could interview auditors that day, and then you'd be ready to make a recommendation to council on September 3rd. Um, Tom Scanlon has done the audit for us and his father before him for a number of years. I don't exactly know how many. I think Council Large said she'd been here for. I've worked with the mayors and Tom Scanlon going on 18 years. Right. So he, his prices are low. He's kept them pretty reasonable for, for all the communities out here. I do know Longmeadow um, decided to go out to bid after using Tom for quite a while. It's a lot of work to respond to one of these RFPs. So when he responded, he did increase his price. He still was the low bidder, and they still hired him. So auditing services, I will tell you, are exempt from 30 mm -hmm. You do not have to bid them. But if you decide you want So I guess there's two things. If you decide you want to see what's out there, the best thing to do is an RFP. If you are deciding that you want to see what's out there and you really want to change auditors, you don't want to have Tom, then I think it's only fair to tell him that so that he doesn't spend the time responding mm -hmm. knowing that really what you want to do is, is do a change. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what I have to offer. But typically, um, Tom has an advantage because he knows the scope of what we're doing already. Because for these auditors, we're going to have to give them a snapshot of the city because they not only do the general fund, but they, they do all of the other accounts right. that we have. So you've got to kind of say, not only are you doing our general ledger as it were, the regular municipal budget, but we have all these other funds that you also have to audit. Right. <clears throat> so it gets some work for them. So we probably, as you indicated, are going to ask for a five-year contract so they can spread the gear up Right. prep costs across a number of years. Right. So Tom has all of the background. He has yeah. like all the, he calls them the work papers. Which so he's got an advantage because he already knows all that. He has an advantage and, and they do suggest you do at least three to five years because that initial startup for a new auditor, if you only do a one year, you're going to pay yeah. a ridiculous amount. Right. So if you're going to switch, you probably want to switch for a three to five year period so you can spread that initial mm -hmm. startup cost. Mm -hmm. We're currently budgeting 40,000, and we paid 38 last year uh, for, paid 38 for Tom last year. Question, in the chart, which I went over on that today, we don't have to go on the low bid. 
correct? Right, and this is not um, subject to 30B, so you do, you do not even have to do an RFP. You can just hire somebody. If you do an RFP, you do not have to take the low bid. In an RFP, you actually structure to kind of weight experience as well as price. Right. So you really don't, you, you, you really, this is probably one of the few things you can actually just decide what you want to do and do it. I'm a little concerned because of reading your language on the time span here. Here we're looking at Friday for an RFP, putting it out there, and then again having whatever interviews which will have to be scheduled and we're also looking bringing it to city council by september 15th correct well that's what the charter says right um, i don't know what kind of leeway within the charter you have to change those dates right i've Thank talked you. with some department heads already and got very good responses about tom scallon where they felt that he explained things very thoroughly to them. They've been very, very pleased with him. That makes me happy. Um, so I mean, obviously he has this historic knowledge, but that's also the concern, right? Is that he, no one else has looked at our books for, and it sounds like we don't even necessarily know how long, but quite, quite a long time. So that, I, I assume that's what Councillor Adams, that's what your concern was. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any complaints. I don't really know of any complaints with the work he's done. And I'm sure he, he's done the work for so long that that's part of the reason why he has so much historical knowledge in the city. <clears throat> that's the other, the other side of the coin is that we're, the point is to try to get somebody who is going to give a new way to folks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I've never been dissatisfied <clears throat> with Tom's work, ever. Um, and. I think, and, and if we remember back historically, one, one of the ways I like to judge an auditor is by their management letter. You know, how hard do they come down on us to make improvements in the way we've been doing business? And if we remember, you know, we had some pretty heavy duty management letters uh, before Claire left, not to tie it to Claire, just historically when she was here, about some procedures, you know, for handling cash and some of that sort of thing. Um, which gave me some confidence in the fact that he was really paying attention to what we were doing and how we're doing it. Because that's the other thing about you know municipal operations and municipal audits. We're so regulated by statute. It's not like the private sector where you got a lot of leeway and mm -hmm. things you can do. <clears throat> you have to comply with so many statutes that really you're, you're locked into the way you do business mm -hmm. to the extent that it's, it's good to have the audit but most of the stuff you take away from it is management letter stuff because everything else has to hit has to hit statutory requirements. So it's not like you have a lot of choice. Right. What, that, what Department of Revenue does is, um, and they do this for the end of the year report. So let me just back up to say that you're also hiring the auditor for the end of the year reports for the two school districts. And um, so the, the school districts have to use the auditor that you choose. And that is a big audit. Um, and where are they going? Is that a different budget item than the forty thousand? Yes, they they pay the schools pay for their end of the year audits as well. Um, and I forget what my point was, but well, we force the change yeah, on that if we switch. I'd like to know. Say that we do look at another auditor. Okay, how much work is involved for you and the mayor? if we switch and get another auditor? How much more work will this detail? They're gonna have to learn the city because they would not have the experience of working in different departments, correct? Right, I mean it will take, for the first year, it uh -huh. will take more staff time to work with a, with a new auditing team. Um, they're typically here, like, Tom will start asking for work papers and other things sometime around the end of July, August 1st. Uh, he usually schedules to come here for three weeks. He brings probably 10 of his team here and they set up in this room or they set up over there and they basically um, work out of the auditors. And so they're basically running between the collector, the treasurer, the auditor, and the assessor's offices um, gathering. But they also go over to HR um, they do a fair amount of testing. Um, so, for example, 
they might go to the auditor's office, pull an HRD2 and say, okay, this person's pay rate changed to $23.10. And then they'll go with Munis and they'll say, show me that that, like, so they'll do a lot fair amount of testing. Um, so it will take a little time for a new auditor to get familiar with our system, but it's not, you know, necessarily like they haven't seen Munis before. I mean, mm -hmm. Munis right. is probably one of the most common programs out there, but Year one, I would say it's probably going to take, it could take more staff time. Okay. But. Also, another question. If we look at, we bring in another new auditor, here we have Scanlon, who's worked for the city over 18 years, okay? And I just heard you say something to the effect with another town or city, he also did the um, RFP, and he got it, mm -hmm. okay? But he went up on his price. So this could happen here, right? Yeah, Long Meadow, the first year they, they put it out, they did it, oh. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like the, if we did, the purpose would be to not do scanning, so scanning wouldn't have that issue. If, reading into it, it sounds like that community, because they offered Scanlon the opportunity to take part in the RFP, we're just looking for better prices. I mean, they, that, you certainly weren't looking to dump Scanlon if you did the RFP. That year they did that. The uh -huh. next year they decided to change auditors. Not be, again, not because they were dissatisfied. They just decided. So Longmeadow, the last audit Tom is doing for them was 2014, and the 2015 audit in Longmeadow is a new firm. So this is. So their finance director hasn't been through the transition with a new firm, so I wasn't able to find out from him, so how much time did this take or anything. Uh -huh. um, and theirs was, again, not a, not a dissatisfaction with Tom. It's just that they, as you, know, as you brought up here, it's a new set of eyes. So that's what, that's what they chose to do. Well, that's just like attorneys, excuse me, in the city, I seen them come and go. I mean, I want to be careful. I, I'm not trying to sway you one way or another. I'm trying to honestly answer your questions. Um, you know, I I don't have any fears that that Tom and or any other auditor is going to come in and tell you that we're doing anything wrong. Um, are there things that we could do better? Are there things that need corrections? There's always audit corrections. Things sometimes get posted on. But I'm not, I don't have any fear like somebody's going to come in here and uncover like this major issue. I think. We've been audit we, we get an audit every year. A lot of communities don't get audited. Mm -hmm. Like I'm so glad that North Hampton does because it just gives me peace of mind that things are getting fixed rather than piling up over a couple of years and then you have somebody come in and then they try to fix it, you know. So are you comfortable <clears throat> with Tom Skin? I have always been Tom comfortable with Tom. Um, but I guess he's done day. other communities you've been in, correct? Yes, he has done he, he did Long Meadow. I was in Long Meadow for years. He does Waitley. I, I was there on course. But again, I, I'm not trying to swear. I, the mayor told me to be really careful because this is a real separation of powers here. Right. And basically, the auditor's coming in and auditing me and the financial team. But um, it doesn't sound like anyone is at all dissatisfied with Scanlon. It is just the matter of the whole point of an audit is to look at things from a different perspective than people inside the system. So if you've <coughs> been the only people looking at that system for decades, if, you know, maybe it's time for yeah. And I, I think, you know, change simply for a different set of eyes, a lot, a lot of what would matter to me since we're not particularly dissatisfied with the service is what, what the new set of eyes is gonna cost us. And it's gonna cost us that for three to five years to get a reasonable bid out of it. You know, is, is is it worth spending that extra money and forcing the two school districts to change and spend the extra money that they'll have to spend for another set of eyes? Um, one of, I'm not compelled necessarily to think so, simply because over those 18 years, we've had three different mayors that they've changed. We've had different finance directors. We've had different auditors. You know, enough people in the mix have changed so that you know anything dastardly would have popped up by now because you know that's the reason you know that's when things turn up if something really bad is going on when somebody leaves in a key position it shows up because they're not around to cover for themselves anymore so to speak so while the auditor hasn't changed 
enough of the financial team has changed and and will again this year because we've got a we'll have a new treasurer collector this year we've had we had a new auditor during this time frame you know tom came and then chris did it for a while and then we have a new auditor so enough of the major players have switched around and you're so regulated by statute in what you do to begin with and the management letters clearly show that they have been you know it's getting really small now they've really i think you guys have been dealing with manual things. i at least have a hard time thinking that it's worth financially doing it and committing because we we'll have to commit to somebody for five three to five years tom doesn't want us to do that you know if we're ever dissatisfied with him we can change our mind at any point if we switch to somebody we don't like them we're going to be stuck with them on contract for a while i just don't personally see the compelling reason to do it simply to have different eyes but you know, that's just my opinion. Um, perhaps you think that, it is. How long would that contract be? Five years? Well, you said three to five I is think, what you'd have to RFP I think for. You have, that's what's recommended you do it. To not have sticker shop. To, right, to yeah. spread oh. it out, do a three or five. I mean, it actually <clears> says five. I think you could probably spread it out <coughs> and decide it. What, what, what's, what says that? <coughs> um, that's kind of just like generally accepted if you're going to, go, you know, switch auditors um, if you want to change that upfront cost. Well, but if Tom doesn't mandate that we do three to five, she doesn't. I mean, is it possible you can find someone else who doesn't mandate that? They're not mandating it. Well, they bid it, but they're going to want to recoup all their upfront costs on a single year contract. Right. And I, I think, think spreading it over five is just to take those startup costs, you know, because if we said everybody bid for a year, Tom's going to walk away with it because he doesn't have startup costs. Right. It's not a level playing field. Right. But as we see, if he's got to go to the trouble for five years and we have a bid, he's going to be lower, but he's going to be higher than what we're doing already. Mm -hmm. So probably would be. And, you know, to his advantage, um, he doesn't want a multi-year contract from us. If we switch to someone we don't like him, we got him for, four, for three or five years. I just thought Stop. of what I, I, that thing I forgot to say. Um, this is just general. Each year, the Department of Revenue tells municipal auditors what they want them to comp. Like, there's always specific things like, and that's what made me think of the end of the year report. Like, De Desi says, we want you to go, we want you to go pay particular attention to transportation this year, or to food service, or something like that. And DOR similarly does the same thing. Um, two years ago, it was, we want you to look at enterprise fund indirects. That was yeah. like DOR came in and said, we want you to look at that. We want, you know, and DOR actually came out and looked at ours. Mm -hmm. um, they picked us, mm -hmm. well, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but so the, so, D, so whoever you hire is getting some directive from DOR and DESE to say, these are some of the areas we want you to particularly concentrate on. Mm -hmm. So there is some, um, each year there's something different selected um, beyond the auditor's control. Be, beyond the normal audit, um, mm -hmm. they ask for you. And to I see. assume that's driven by things they see across the state. Absolutely, yeah. So they see trouble in this in some cities and towns, and they say, okay, check everybody, check everybody. Yes. So all, all of you go through it with your audit. Yeah, that's definitely what so. they do. Is population also a concern to look at with an auditor? I've noticed in Nantucket, it has a population of 50,000. So what are we actually looking for? Population isn't really what an auditor is going to base the audit on. It's really the size of the budget and the complexity of the town. So for instance, Amherst, when they go, when an auditor goes into audit Amherst, they're not auditing the school district. So they're also, so they're not doing their end of the year report, but they're also not auditing 700 other employees. Okay. Um, because Amherst has a regional school. Mm -hmm. So when they go in to do Amherst, they're only looking at that. So when they come in to do Northampton, Northampton is a K-12, so they have to look at a larger range of funds and transactions and revenues, et cetera, than they do, say, for an Amherst. So it's not really population-driven, because Amherst actually okay. has a higher population than us, but their budget is less complex and their um, and, and their audit is way less complex because they don't have a school district. Um, they have a school district and it's not part of the community. Mm -hmm. That school district is getting audited separately. The only thing that that auditor sees in Amherst is they pay to Amherst Regional Schools, you know, $23 million. As their share. Right. So they're not auditing 
every transaction than that school district. So it's not population, it's really the financial complexity. The other piece that makes a difference um, when auditors are putting their bid together is how many enterprise funds you have. Because every community has a general fund, but then they have to treat each of these as a separate entity and audit them separately. So when you got the report, um, the audit report for 2014, you saw there was general fund, then there was water, sewer, solid waste, and then this year you're going to see storm water. So, so we have four enterprise funds, we have a K through 12, we have almost a thousand full-time employees. Um, they're also providing, they, they have to meet like all the GASB, which is Government Accounting Standard Board things, so they have to put in all this stuff about our retirement system, so they have to kind of dovetail on the audit that the retirement board does, and then they also dovetail on the actuarial study that we have for the OPEB, the um, other post-employment benefits. So they have to, pieces of their audit are prepared by other entities and they have to incorporate those into their audit. So, um, but in terms of getting a bid, you may need to lay out as much information about the community and its finances as possible because you know you want to give them the best information so you get a good bid. So who would help us with that? Well, I've given Pam a couple of examples. Um, you know, I can give her some information on like the size of our budget, and we can also, if you decide you want to do an RFP, we can point to the audit from last year, which is on all our audits are online. So any auditor coming in, that's the first thing. You know, if they're preparing an RFP, the first thing they're going to do is go say, "Let me look at the audit." See what Tom has done. Yeah, because yeah. that's going to tell them as much as anything about the size of the thing, the, the community. We would want to stress to people that we are a uh, full K through 12 district. The schools are part of the city, mm -hmm. etc. So and four enterprise funds. Four enterprise funds, and that we have, you know, roughly X amount of revolving funds, and and because mm -hmm. um, what you see in the general fund is like like one big piece, but there are probably, I'm gonna take a guess, 100 different grants, there's probably 20 different revolving funds. We probably have 200 different trust funds, um, and all of those get looked at in the, this process. Now, I know, you know, from my time as an assessor, that the Department of Revenue keeps a really close watch on everything they do and have to certify everything they, they've done annually before you can send taxes. Right. Are, does, does the same thing happen with the other financial departments? Oh, absolutely, because um, in order for us to set our tax rate, mm -hmm. we basically have to prove through the recap that the budget is balanced. The recap is all yep. based on everything the Board of Assessors submits, yep. and we have to prove our budget's balanced. Uh, the other, you have to prove the other side of it. Right, right, yeah. and then, yeah, so I mean, the recap is where it all comes together and we prove, yeah, our budget is balanced. We have the money we say that we have. So in other words, we have this general audit, but then of the financial departments, the Department of Revenue is individually keeping track of each of them to make sure that they are in fact living up to their statutory requirements and they can prove their numbers as well. So we have this overall audit but the individual financial departments are also heavily checked and regulated by DOR individually to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Right. So, you know, so the assessors are approved by DOR, the collectors approved by DOR. You guys could approve your numbers, you know, so when they go on the recap sheet and DOR certifies us to send tax bills, and in fact, everything on that side is already essentially not called audited but it's been certified by the Department of Revenue that it's all in order so you can send tax bills. Right. So at least on the income side. Right. And, that's right. and our auditor, the one that sits in City Hall, the, yeah. our auditor, files every October. As the audit is being done, she's also filing what's called Schedule A. And that's basically our big report to the state of how we spend every dollar. And then that document, along with free cash documents is what the, uh, the independent auditor helps the auditor put together so that we give that to DOR and then that DOR then certifies our free cash um, when everything is all said and done. So the, our, our own employee, the auditor Joyce, 
does all this work, but, she, but the independent auditor is assisting with that because they're doing the audit at the same time, and that's when things are correct. You know, sometimes there's, there's always things that have to be corrected. Posting errors. Posting or errors and things, you know, so. Big decision. Mm -hmm. no, please. I, I think that, you know, the DOR keeps an eye on these things, so do the departments, but the charter mandates a non-governmental entity for a reason, and it's because that's important. And, it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's important to have a third party do that, and it's, it's really important to switch authors um, because they develop a relationship with the city and, they, and Scanlon has done that. And that's fine, but there comes a point when um, we have to ask ourselves if, if someone else can bring new ideas to the way we, we manage the money here. Um, the reasons for not hiring Scanlon include maybe the administration has to do a little bit more work at first. I don't really find that persuasive or compelling. I feel that the administration can rise to that task, and I think that the administration has more staff now than they have had in previous years. I have no doubt that they can rise to that task. Another reason I've heard is because um, Scanlon might not like it. Well, of course Scanlon doesn't like it. Um, because Scanlon has a financial interest in it. And this is not anti-Scanlon at all. But this is the Finance Committee. Um, we're supposed to be acting not in the best interest of Scanlon or the administration, even though sometimes our best interests overlap, they frequently do. Um, we're supposed to be acting in the best interest of the people that we represent. And we should look for another auditor who will bring a new set of eyes and a new set of scrutiny and a, and a new scrutiny to the city budget. So I, I, I don't find persuasive the reasons for, oh, oh, and the big one, the best reason for not doing it is money. But you have to weigh that the, the additional cost uh, of a few thousand dollars in our hundred million dollar plus year, uh, a year budget against the fact that this will bring new scrutiny and new eyes to our budget and our management. And, and I think that that far outweighs um, the benefits of, of keeping Scanlon on. Thank you. Can you talk about the time frame again? So it runs, this is such a tight time frame just because we're having this conversation today. If we had this conversation a month ago or two months ago, that would have been, we would have more time to work on this RFP, right? Um, so is it, is it practical and possible for us to pull this off? And um, if not, or if we don't feel like we can produce as good an RFP as we would like to, is it, might we consider doing one more year, putting it off one more year and scheduling it now that we have this conversation in May or June or you know, sometime earlier next year. Can that be done? Or whoever has that conversation. Well, I mean, if we're, if we're doing this, simply for the sake of the fact that we think we need new eyes, even though we have no complaints of where we're at. You know, and I, I honestly don't see a problem, but it is not a bad concept that at some point in time we should have a different set of eyes. We talked about this last year. Uh, I think we do have the time to put an RFP out. The only thing I'd object to, because yes, we're doing this for the citizens, but if we don't see a problem, I don't want to spend a ton, ton more than we need to to accomplish something just to satisfy ourselves, we have a different set of eyes. I mean, if we were dissatisfied, I could see it, we claim we're not, but we want to change eyes, but if changing eyes is gonna cost a considerable amount of money, and we have to agree to that with an unknown entity for five years, I may not actually go, I may, may not at that point think this is really worth doing if it costs a lot more. So I, <clears throat> I could see putting out the RFP. Um, I could see meeting a month from now and see, first of all, who responds mm -hmm. and what their pricing's like. Though I would very much like to include Scanlon, we know up front he's just going to be cheaper because he's already he already knows the community. But it would at least allow us to prepare to see simply to get another pair of eyes for best practices purposes. How much we're going to have to pay to get that, and then we can quantify is it worth it or isn't based on how much more we're going to have to pay. Okay, but that will automatically mean that we're going to be paying him more. Yeah. In the future. Right. And, and that's if, if we didn't include him and just retained him, we, could, is that a possibility? Or does we, he need to be included in the RFP to retain him in the future if we'd like to? If, I mean, if we don't switch. Does that make sense? So we don't, we don't include him in the RFP, but we also tell him 
we're, we, we're going through this function, we may still hire you anyway. Right. But well, don't bid. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, think you have, go, I think you'd have to have him respond to the I, uh, I kind of think yeah. you do as well. Um, <laughs> if, if you want, if you want to still consider him, then he should respond. I'll level to you. But then we're also at that point. If the dollars aren't compelling, we're sort of obligated to give him a longer-term contract than we've had to at this point. So if we look at it and say, "Oh God, everybody's considerably more expensive. We want to stick with them." We're going to be probably sticking with them for more than one year. Uh, and why? If, if the because they'd all be bid. They're all probably going to bid, you know, three or five year. As will he. You know, I suppose we could go back and say, okay, what's your one year price? But but they're bidding three or five years because they need to get spend all that time getting. Up we can't have him bid one thing and then bid something else. So they're all probably going to have to bid the same thing because the RFP is not going to be for everybody but Scanlon and. Scanlon, here's your RFP because that's not how it happens. I think if you do an RFP, you either can decide up front if you're not going to consider him at all, then tell him that. Mm -hmm. If you are going to consider him, he needs to be, like you need to have him do the same thing you're everybody asking of everybody else. Yeah. That's just from a procurement standpoint. Mm -hmm. I think you need to be, be, you know, be fair that way. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a given because he knows us so well, he's going to respond with the best price of everybody. I think the drill for me would be, how much more is a different set of eyes going to cost us? And, and the opportunity cost of that is that Scanlon would probably cost us more than he would anyway, but then we can make the determination exactly how, how bad do we need this other set of eyes and are we willing to pay the difference just for a best practice or not? You know, and that's why it's good because we can weigh one of the factors is cost. Another factor is do we want to go back to him because he's been doing it so long. So if the cost is relatively close, we may choose to go in a different direction. But it's not. We still have the opportunity. We probably would have lost the services at that point. But then again, there's there's a possibility that it is possible that he doesn't give us as favorable a price because of because we made him. But then he's likely to go up anyhow at some point. At some point during that time frame, anyway. So, uh, you know, so I, I don't disagree with your concept of best practices, changing, changing the auditor for best practices reason, the new set of eyes. I just want to quantify how much it costs before I say, yeah, it's worth doing or no, it's not. Okay. So an RFP would, and inviting Scanlon to the RFP is probably, sounds yeah. like the right And then we can, That's a month from now, determine, you know, we're not, we're not unhappy with them, and he's clearly the best deal, or gee, they're all pretty close, you know, maybe we should take the chance to get a different set of eyes not that we're unhappy, but it is a best practices thing. Um, because I'm on audit committees on the, on the commercial side as well, that the, and those guys just cringe at the thought of Gatsby, um, <laughs> you know, doing a government entity after doing corporations. But we switched them, and we we really didn't see that much difference. We went from a from a regional firm. It's it's a not a huge thing. It's a ten million dollar a year company. But we switched from a small regional thing to Grant Thornton, which is a mega company. And it really didn't make that much difference. You know, they, they certainly came with a more impressive herd of people, and they cost more, but it didn't make that much difference on that side. And there certainly are more variables there than here, because you're much more regulated. But I, I would be comfortable doing the RFP, meeting in a month, seeing what we got, including Scanlon, and then we decide, do the eyes cost did the new eyes cost a reasonable amount or too much to do? Does that, that seem? Yeah, one thing I said, I cannot be here on August 20th. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what other people's opinions are. But, um. I mean, the only thing in the time frame that I um, told you, you know, you have till the 15th of September mm -hmm. to the charter. So mm -hmm. gearing up to make your recommendation at September 3rd is convenient because that's your current council meeting. Mm -hmm. But you do, you could put another week and a half into this into this time frame by going mm -hmm. talking to the yeah. council president, maybe scheduling a special yeah. meeting. But I mean, I think we can see a month from now where we are. If we need right. the time, we need the time. If we don't, we don't. Or can simply put the question out to the council for what we see. Here's, you know, here's Scanlon. Here's the other ones. Are you all compelled to change? You know, because it's not just up to us. It's up to the rest of the council. How seriously do you feel about another set of eyes? And here's what they cost, you know, let all nine people decide. And we can certainly talk.
toss it to them and they could determine on the third if they wanted to take more time or do more interviews or I mean clearly these are all people that are qualified to do this work they all you know they'll all be qualified so they can all do it we can certainly see where they've been what they've done and And, w and what's your pleasure? Do we want to speak to them and interview them, or we just want to review them and their prices on the 25th, and then if we want to speak with them, maybe we need to ask for that extra time? I think it's an interviewing process anyways, correct? It's whatever you, yeah. whatever the council decides. Mm -hmm. can, can we put the RFP that they're mandated to have a working knowledge and or experience with this? Yeah. Because, that was one of the reasons why there would be more tax on administration. They didn't know Mutis, is that it? Well, no, because we run the reports for them. Um, so they don't actually have to know Mutis. Um, so I, I don't think that that's, I think you just want to make sure that they have a, a fair amount of municipal experience, Massachusetts municipal yes, experience. experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we do this, this would have to be out by this Friday. I mean, again, it's your time frame, but mm -hmm. It is summer, and if you got this out on Friday and had them due on the 21st of August, that would give that three. would give three weeks to mm -hmm. the firms, and then you could look at them on the 25th. Mm -hmm. The you could look at the proposals, mm -hmm. and then you have till yeah. the 15th deadline. Okay, so um, my suggestion might be we look at the proposals and determine which of them we want to, may want to speak to, and then set a, a time to meet with them um, at that point in time and uh, certainly can you know we're getting really good at special counsel meetings <laughs> so re review the proposals and invite them to speak to us directly if we choose to invite them to speak yeah to and just them. like vet the number we get and then and then i mean we'll we should know if they're in the 21st um we meet the 25th I mean, we can certainly communicate with what we've got. If we've only got two, we certainly could ask them to come in on the 25th. Once we know what we got. I am not around. I will not be here. Mm -hmm. So we need to approve yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I'm gone from the 24th but, to the 25th. But you're on on the 21st, right? Yes. So we could let you know before you go what we've got. Sure. I mean, yeah. I assume they'll, it'll be some. Yeah, and we can we can share them so you could. Yeah. You could at least know what we've got. You know, we invite entities in. It'll be after the event, so we can keep this Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And uh, does anybody object um, for this one if we invite the council president if he's available? Well, that just that just creates different posting issues. That'd be a full quorum. Oh, that was right there. We hit uh, five. We did five, so we don't do that. Hello, if Councillor Scare is in here. It would be four. So if you if you can't be here, you know, and that's really why I was suggesting, you know, we have the fourth you person. Can't vote. So what's the point? Just to, to get him in the loop, you know. So because then if we do ask for a special meeting, he knows where we're at. Um, if we just say, hey, we really want to interview people. And which means we won't be done for the third. Are you cool with giving us a special meeting to get this done? Yeah, he can attend. can attend anyway, but I'll just to invite him. Yeah, right. and and there would only be four of us anyway, so we wouldn't have that problem. Mm -hmm. So, uh, ready for a motion on this one? Yeah. A motion. Correct me. This is a motion to instruct. Um, the, the council clerk draft an RFP for RFP for, um, for independent auditors for fiscal year 2016 or 20, 20, 20. Yeah, it's for the fiscal year 2016 audit. Yeah, fiscal year 20 fiscal year 2016 audit with the posting with a deadline of the 21st of next month. If you submit. And do we want to? Um, Best practices was submitting, we should probably tell them the term we want it for, shouldn't we? So that they don't go, one goes four, one goes five, one goes three. Yeah. <clears throat> um, 
Um, you want to say five? That'll give us. That will give us probably give them that length of time to incorporate whatever they see their startup overhead to be to keep the numbers as reasonable as they can be. But if one of the concerns is that we may not like them, so uh, may not want to give them a longer period than three. The Long Meadow give them three. RFP is a three year. That's the one where they switched. Mm -hmm. And so they switched and they did a three year. I don't, do you remember Pam what the Nantucket one was? No. Mm -hmm. I know. Oh, so you're more comfortable with three? Yeah, okay. I think the, the important thing is that they're all the same. And that we, so we're comparing apples and apples, same services. Five. Is the Nantucket one five? No, I'm sorry, that's probably different. Right? Yeah. I think it's three. Oh, oh. where it services consistent. How does that sound, Jesse? All right. Three fiscal years, 13, 14, oh, I think. Okay. Three. Take their vote on it, so everybody who doesn't agree doesn't have to vote on it. Is there a second to it? Second. Okay, so we'll do three. Uh, any other questions? You, Pam, is there anything else that you think you need from us to? All right. Any more discussion on the, on, on the motion and the three year? Okay. Aye. 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 Aye.